everyone, I'm Darren Knight, a.k.a. Southern Mama. And I'm Red Squirrel. Hey, we got another episode of funny news or exotic news. Whatever kind of news you want to you add there uh, on news. the docket. It's been a long time since we did one of these podcasts. There's a lot going on. Yeah. We had the Super Bowl. I think the Rams won. And uh, we had Valentine's Day. And uh, spring's right around the corner. You know what else is uh, right around the corner? Your birthday. It is. March the 14th. I'll be 36. Yours truly will be turning another year. And I'm so excited about it. I know. Uh, Pisces, you know we're the best. We can't help it. You know it is what it is. Aquarius. Aquarius. <laughs> oh God. Water bear. I should have asked you that. I should have. I should have made you fill out application before we started doing this. Do we not get along? Well, we do. Yeah. Just not in the bedroom. I don't think. I don't really know. I'm a man's like, I don't know how that goes. We got some funny stories yeah. for you. We're going to jump right into that. Jonna, you got to start it off with a good one. Where are you yeah. at? Funny news. And what? For the end of the podcast, we're going to touch base with you on some show dates that we got coming up pretty soon. Yeah. All right, so the Batman was recently released in movie theaters. Now, you guys went to see that yeah, the other day, didn't you? Phil and I have not been to see a movie in over two years <gasps> in the movie theater. Yeah. Thursday, cheers. Thursday, Thursday, cheers to Thursday. that. Oh. Mm. <clears throat> Good stuff. <clears throat> wow. Mm. Cinema whiskey. That'll. Wow. That will right. spark up a podcast at so, any time. Yeah. Um, was a little disappointed oh. in Robert, what is it, Pattison? Um, Edward off of Twilight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he was kind of a meek, mild, kind of hunkered over like um, Bruce Wayne. No. No, no. Bruce Wayne is charismatic. Did he do the, did he do the voice of Batman? No, man. he didn't do the voice. What? That's Batman. Batman. He was very soft-spoken. The first time that I ever seen a Batman, I was like, why is he talking like that? They're like, that's Batman. I said, he talks like an old movie. No, 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 no. Little, little glittery vampire man was very. What did he do? Just come walking out of the cane? Like, stop it. Everybody stop it. Stop it. You stop it. You stop it. You stop it. Robin, come on, let's go. And he didn't, he wasn't like, like, just like, you know, Bruce Wayne has that sexiness about him and that. You know, just over the top, you know, <laughs> sense of, you know, just self-worth and just bam, you know. No, he was like, hey, <laughs> hey. Anyway. Okay. So, I just feel like, you know, it's not a moment there. Like you you and Bruce Wayne have had <laughs> intimate moments or something. <laughs> you know, Bruce Wayne, like, he walks in and he's all like, mm, mm. And he's he squeezing can, and he falls on the room. room. No, 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 not this Bruce Wayne. Oh, no. wow. He was like, hello. Wow. Yeah. All right, so the Batman recently came out in theaters out in Texas. Good old Texans. Mm. As a prank, they decided to release a bat. When you say that, the do, you mean the, do you mean the movie theater people? No, someone that attended the movie decided ah. to release a bat in the theater during the movie. Wow. And it was flying around wildly and crazy and flying in front of the screen and everything. And uh, so they had to call in local animal control to contain the bat. Made the announcement, if you are uncomfortable with bats, you need to leave the theater. Yeah. So, well, yeah. If you're uncomfortable with that. So in other words, they, they went ahead and played the movie? I mean, I don't know. I would have stayed. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I mean, we have yeah. a lot of bats out here in the South mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you see them all the time, especially yeah. in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, they just flutter, flutter around. I'm just thinking he's going to get somewhere in the curtain and mm -hmm. he's going to kind of chill. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably stay. I really mm -hmm. would. I mean, I mean, I mean, if someone would have brought a whole bag of bats in there, you know, well, that say that three times flash. <laughs> I would have brought in a whole bag of bats. Was that have been you? If you had done it? A bag of bats. Yeah, a bag of bats. <laughs> I feel like we need to tell them what's really going on here. Yeah, I feel we like we really got a confession. Do. We um, do have a confession. This is actually our our third take on this podcast, yeah. and it's and, it's and, unusual because we usually just roll with the first one. And we have been um, taking shots and drinking every single until they pay us. We're not giving time. them any shout outs. Uh, I mean, I'm just but, saying. So we're kind of like as a bag of. So bags. if we're just staggering through this, allow us to. Well, speaking about movies. Yeah. Our next story. Uh, hey guys, if you were a fan of Edward the Scissorhand, oh, wow. this is weird. Our fan base, you know, our fan base mostly female, uh, which we love you girls. Uh, but we got a lot of guys out there too. But now most of our fan base ages from twenty all the way to forty-five. I'm sure that some of these people are thinking, "What is Edward Scissorhands?" It was a really good movie. It came out in nineteen ninety. And um, if you're a fan of the movie right now, if you want to, you can buy the original house from Edward Scissorhand, the nineteen ninety film uh, with. Uh, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, my apologies, 
Uh, the house is for sale down there. It's been currently renovated, which I'd imagine it would have been since 1990. But I wonder if they'll cut the price. A, a lot of <laughs> a lot of the original things in the home is still there, uh, along with uh, a life size mannequin of the character Edward Scissorhand himself. It's a really good movie. Uh, and if you want to purchase this home, it is located there again in Florida for six hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars. So if you got seven hundred thousand dollars, which is probably more than the movie grossed when it first originally came out, then you're welcome to come. <laughs> I really like well, it was a good movie. It just it was, it was one of those movies. It took a couple of years, and everybody started watching it. It was like a cult uh, following now. Yeah. yeah, Slay dressed but, up yeah. as as, yes. as well, yes. such a there's it was a For good a costume. Halloween party. Didn't recognize Slay. I didn't. I didn't. He come up. He's yeah. like, hey man, what's up? I was like, hey, yeah. hey you, good, how are you? God, you can make it. I really shouldn't have admitted that, you know. Now people, random people, are going to start coming to my my galas and just act like they were just been friends for years. You know, <laughs> it just happens with the costume. Yeah, with the yeah. costume on, we drank yeah. way too much. Um, yeah, but um, but yeah, he had he had the fingers and everything. My favorite scene was when he was cutting all the bushes. Are the bushes cut? Uh, yeah. Well, that's another thing. The, the home has, uh, the, the, they have exotic bushes that cut in different forms of fashions uh, outside the house, of course. But uh, the home made famous from the Edward Scissorhand uh, movie. Uh, they So this is, Lu is it Lutz, Florida? This is Lutz, Florida. Yes. The home uh, currently owned by Joey Klops, or Lops, with a silent K, however you want to say it, uh, was, uh, was made famous as the home of the family that took in Johnny Depp's character in the movie, if you've mm -hmm. never seen the movie. Mm -hmm. um, this was a Tim Burton film. I know that name reigns very familiar with a lot of the, our mm -hmm. uh, fan base, both young and old, so check it out if you've never seen it. The Klops had the home remodeled to make the interior resemble the set that served as the inside of the home in the film, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and it is stocked with memorabilia, including authentic and reproduced props an original script used by the movie's pop master and life-size Edward Scissorhand mannequin. So pretty cool, pretty cool. If you find okay. yourself down in Florida and you want to buy this house, uh, now, now no, if, no, you know, this is just my input. You know, this is the beautiful thing about a podcast and that we're not anchors on a syndicated station. I can say this. There's no way in hell that I'd spend almost a million dollars on this two-bedroom bungalow. Yeah. But if you want to, it's their beautiful home. Outside's been redone. They got the funky looking bushes. Uh, cute, cute house. But I've got to. Uh, <laughs> you cut me. You do the Edward. Uh -huh. Good movie though. Mm -hmm. What you got us on the docket? Hey, we're rolling right along oh, here. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh Harvey Weinstein. Oh, there's a favorite town mm -hmm. favorite. That that deserves another little sip right there. Oh, does it? Just the does name. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a little risky. Mm. Big time producer in Hollywood. Oh, he had everything. Full of sex scandals and oh my goodness gracious, he gets the wag of the finger. Oh no. Yes, and he's already um, in prison. What could he have done? Well, um, he he met with his attorney. While there, the attorney slipped him some milk duds. Contraband. Milk duds. Milk duds. A Rolex yes. or some milk yes. duds. <laughs> Milk duds. Of all the candies. Uh-huh. Now, he is awaiting trial for 11 charges of rape and sexual assault. And in 2020, he was sentenced to 23 years in New York City. So now he is, um, he has more more trials, you know, coming up. But he met with his lawyer. Boom. Hey, man. Bring me some milk duds. I need milk duds, man. When they go back into their area or they, whatever they were found in his cell they were found in his cell they i was about did, to say they did, did they do it they did the shakedown i was wondering if they did a cavity search and yeah, they found them because the i was gonna say what better things cell. to stick inside your finkster than milk duds because i mean if you it looks like pee -pee. It, looks like pee -pee. i'm just saying you know that i mean that i mean if if, if somebody's gonna bring in contraband mm. you know if, if i'm gonna get in trouble i mean i I'm wanting some alcohol. Yeah. And some cigarettes. Yeah, bring me some diamonds. Bring me some. I want some, I want to hustle some stuff. You know what I mean? I want the guard I want the, the guard to walk in and be like, why does he have eighty seven thousand seminoles? What I mean, I don't know what he had to Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Give me a cell phone. Don't beat me up. I need Here's some FaceTime. Yeah. Here's a Snickers bar. Here's, <laughs> Here's Well a Snickers well, yeah. you know, I bet yeah. milk buds up the keister was probably a lot more comfortable or if that's if that had been what happened. You know what? The box. Even if that didn't what happened, just thinking outside the box. 
probably was more a, comfortable than a Snickers bar. He was a multi-millionaire. I mean, was. at least let's do some good chocolate. And you know, Godiva. That's the irony Godiva. behind it. Charlotte Godiva. Charlotte Belly. Charlotte. Not another word. Another reason that, that we're glad Godiva. this is not a, a Godiva. Godiva? Yes, and it's Sherrod Well, in the, in the south, in the country, we say Godiva. That old Godiva chocolate. But anyway, you want the good chocolate. I mean, you want some feeling in that shit. It's crazy, the you irony. Know like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I said earlier, they, 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 you know, this guy had private jets. He had mm -hmm. actors, Hollywood, at his beck and call, bowing down. Needing, millions and millions and millions of dollars hanging out with politicians and, and all these socialites. Come in. Bring me some milk. Duds. And I need milk. Can't duds. even get a milk dud. <laughs> Brother can't even get a milk dud in this thing, cuz. Stick it. <laughs> I mean, really, Holy shit. Well, that'll happen when you rape 11 people. It's just, you know, in one minute you're uh, flying high in the sky. Less than that. And then next thing you know, you're sucking dick for milk duds. Oh, you're milk duds. You're, you're asking for milk dud. Oh, I said it. Harvey Weinstein uh, is a dud. Well, you know. Yeah, it, maybe that's why he was asking for milk duds. Mm. I can't believe it. Shh, beep, beep. We're just going to beep that beep. one. Might do a little beep yeah. on that. Now, Phil, you recently went to, uh, you had to go into, so. My husband's behind the scenes. Raise our a lawyer slash producer slash cameraman slash major slash military slash. This guy's got more jobs than I do, and I'm a four-time business owner. So, yeah, we're busy. And uh, But you had recently, you went to, was it Tuckwaller? Now, that's one of only, what, two or three women prisons in the United States? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tuckwaller. What happened to you so, down there, yeah. Phil? I went to interview with my client and uh, got appointed to represent her. Do you want to come around here? No, I do not. I got appointed to represent her. And when I got to the prison, I checked in, and then this very large female guard, and I'm 6'2", and she dwarfed me. So you need to go in the bathroom. I got to search you. And <laughs> she could have been played Batman. Yeah, I mean, I, I was a little yeah. nervous, and she patted me down. And you got to think, I patted a lot of people down after policing for so many years. Sure, uh, but I've never been patted down, so it was a little violating a little bit. But then she knifed hand my ass. She like. <laughs> <laughs> His ass was nice hands. And so I told her. What so, are you talking about? I told her. Like, 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 you I said, I promise you. But you're the attorney. Did I you have to put in your pants? No, I didn't. She, okay. she, I said, man, there's nothing up there. I promise you. And she's like, you'd be surprised. Oh, I <laughs> bet <laughs> that we would. Oh, my God. Know, I thought milk duds were milk safe. Duds. You know, but. We arrested somebody years ago. Me and my partner at the time in, in Gadsden. And we took her to the county jail. No. And no. She pulls out no. a lighter, a crack pipe, and crack from her cooter. Oh, and after she got booked in, she cooter. is smoking it in a jail cell. Oh, no. There was so, also oh, a woman that no. stuck a bunch of prescription Well, anyway, now up her. stop. Upper, well, that happens a lot, actually. Well, could could you, be, could we, we could be talking about anyone. All right, let's go to the next story. You know what I mean? Okay, uh, what, right, let's go to the next story. Uh, what am I doing here? Uh, we, we went to Edward. It's page one. Now we, oh, this is a good one, folks. Speaking of, you know, ladies and situations, I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, you know, you ladies like your makeup. This is a really cool story I coming out of... love my makeup. Of, love my makeup. We can tell by your face um, that centuries old... Century... Century old makeup case found in Arizona Petrified Forest National Park. The name of the park is Arizona's Petrified Forest National Park. We actually have some petrified wood at our house. No one cares. <laughs> um, National Park Service officials said a rusted metal case found buried at Petrified Forest National Park turned out to contain makeup dating back one hundred years ago. I thought this was a pretty cool story. Um, and I That's think that our fan, female fan base could find this really interesting. Pretty cool stuff, though. I mean, uh, uh, we'll have a picture of this brought up, hopefully. But yeah, yeah, Petrified National Forest officials said uh, in a Facebook post that the uh, small metal case was found in the site of a homestead that was owned by the Howell family around 1900. And uh, looking at this, I mean, it, uh, 
Hi, it looks like pink I was about to say, makeup. I, it, it, you know, it, with, pink cake makeup with a little bit of water or maybe just yeah. a really strong brush. Yeah, I'm there. I'm I was using about to say it. this could be. I'm you know, using it. I don't know. It's really interesting. You know, it's so crazy to see that things I, that can stand the test of time. And apparently, pig yeah. fat is one of them uh, because this uh, 100 year old metal case standing the test of time. I your how makeup could do that. I wonder how they tainted it. I don't know, but I bet that if we buried you with a full set of makeup that you put on yourself, if you could do your own makeup before we bury you, I bet that all this. Would if look, I could do my own makeup for. I've but if you could, said, if you could, if you could do your own makeup, I've already said nobody's doing my hair like I do, and nobody's doing my makeup like I do. Well, of course not, because you're deceased. But whoever does it, if they could do it like you, I would bet this would be like a mummified situation. You, you, yeah. she would look just like this shit. Uh, a hundred years from now, I mean, I, I mean, I really believe that. <laughs> Jonna, give me some more funny news. I don't have any more funny news. Are you done with your story? I'm done with my story. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Are you really? Not. Okay, well, good. I got, I got one more. You got me too. This is what, that's what we did. Oh, I've got three here. Okay, well, okay, I added this one. At, well, okay, but this was a funny, it's a funny story, all right? And this woman goes above and beyond for this particular story. There was a license plate. Now, this, this was a similar story happened with the, uh, FJB situation. I'm going to tell you what that stands for because they'll fact check me, which we all agree. But anyway, um, there was a, uh, a license plate that had six letters on it. I don't even remember the name of the state now that this occurred in. Uh, it's somewhat irrelevant, but they took it away from it. They said that it was offensive and yada, yada, yada. I saw yada, a squirrel yada. up there somewhere. You did see a squirrel. That's not the story. But um, squirrel. We have, we have another story that's kind of relatable to that funny though it is funny um because it it because it relates to our um our storyline it's not popping up and i've saved all of these i want to do this gross story this was a funny story. story this lady had a, a you know it was a tag oh there it is they added another story, so it went over to the third page instead of the second. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. As again, as well as <laughs> I'm just talking as fast yeah, as I possibly can yeah. to save up the time, but it's look at well, and now we've got, you know, I just need you to give me the story. If you can just so I, you know click on it. And yeah. in America, that usually oh, brings up yeah. the well, there it is. All right, North Carolina is the state on this one. North Carolina, Carolina woman finding the DMV to keep her fart vanity plate. This is really funny. Uh, Carly C <laughs> Was that from the pen? It was through the pen. And I could have swallowed it. It was from the pen. I could have swallowed it. You could have you could have swallowed it, only it made a loud racket as it flew across the room to get inside it of did. there. I don't know why that just happened. We're gonna set that over there. Yes. Anyway, wow. Because you're, you're so willy nilly with it. <laughs> you're so like <laughs> Carly Sidney of Asheville, North Carolina, said she applied for the license plate in October and was pleasantly surprised uh, when the request was approved. And she was issued the fart plate for the back of her pickup truck. Hell yeah. It ain't going on an SUV. It ain't going on a car. It's going on a pickup truck. <laughs> Sidney said, and she received a letter from the mail from the DMV on February the 25th telling her that complaints have been coming in. Log oh, about her shit. plate. Oh, you got Which, AKA, that. that means we ain't got no complaints yet, but we just realized what we did and it passed, yeah. and now we got a problem with that because the governor wants to get it back. The DMV told Sydney she might be allowed to keep the plate if she replied to the letter with an explanation of what the plate meant to her and why she believes she should be allowed to keep the damn plate. Well, let me tell you what she did. Sydney consulted with some friends and founded. A group titled Friends of Asheville Recreational Trails, a.k.a. FART, all right? She said the group now has a mailing list, a website, and merchandise. Sydney said the group recently held its first meeting and had 15 members attend. <laughs> Just, you know what? Well, those 15 members are freedom fighters. D you, don't ever underestimate you, a woman. Don't ever underestimate a woman. Don't ever underestimate a patriot. 
Yeah. I love what's happening here. They showed up and it was a, it was an actual meeting that was uh, yeah. documented. It was recorded. Sydney mm -hmm. sent a, the DMV a, a letter explaining um, that she, you know, explaining she should be allowed to keep the plate as reference to her uh, new group. Mm -hmm. And she is now mm -hmm. waiting for a response. The DMV in North Carolina has not a response. Now, if you're watching this, uh, I, I think she should be allowed to keep it. I think so. I think if you want to put on your plate, anything you want to put on your plate, it's freedom of speech. All right? We pay taxes for those plates. We pay taxes for our vehicles. We pay taxes for the gas that goes in them. We pay tax, 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 tax. I don't give a shit from Shy Noah what you have or what your bumper sister sticker says. First of all, kids that it should offend should not even be able to read that loud level anyway. You should be able to do what you want to do. It's a nameplate one minute. It's a the next. Who knows where this is going? I'm not going to speak about it because we don't want to get monetized. Demonetized. Demonetized. But I, I think she's going to am... keep her fart license plate. I'm you, Sydney. I think it's Cindy. Uh, uh, Cindy. <laughs> it's Cindy with an S. That's why I said Cindy. Because it is Go weird. Cindy. Uh, Go she likes Cindy. fart plates and her mother couldn't spell. But it doesn't matter uh, because we love you anyway. Cindy. My brother had a license plate. Mm. F-U-E-Q-U-E. Fuck you. -E. Fa that's we draw the line at the F word and the G D word. We don't do that on the It was like French. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> well, you know what? That's his that's his right as an American. Oh, oh, you know, there's rights oh. in this country. You know, you can't go around hitting people with a hammer. But if you want to buy a hammer, go home and hit yourself in the head with one. Yeah. yeah. Do what you want to do. You know, if you want to say something, if you want to sit yeah. on the side of the street and scream out stuff all day long, <laughs> or you want to put it on your license plate or whatever, you maybe you're paying for it. Why not? Fart. Yeah, fart, fart. fart it up. That's I it. am so offended. I don't know I'm what I'm going to do. I've only done it seven times today. I'm offended. I'm going to make that eight. You know, people fart like up to 20 times a day. I know my husband does more than that. Oh, my. Farts are funny. The confessions oh, come Jesus. out. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> fart. Fart. I'm offended. Feel no more alcohol for her. Uh, okay, we're moving. let's do one more. Look, we got one more. Oh, my gosh. We got one more. We do have one more. I'll do another one with you, but I do want to tell them about some shutters got coming up. Guys, April the first. first the <laughs> it would be the first. Uh, it's not a joke, though. It's not April Fool's. It's not Fools. a joke. We will be in... Um, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Yeah, thank you so much. And... <laughs> And then uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, and then the next day on the second will be in uh, Wichita, Kansas. Yes. I remember that because the movie uh, Twister, and that love that gotcha. was devastated gotcha. from a fictionary uh, F five. Was it fictionary or was it non fictionary? Was it fictionary real? Fictionary is not real. Not real. It's fictionary F five, like I said before. And uh, that's the teacher coming. Yes, that's April the first and second, and on the. Eighth and the ninth, which is the following weekend, or Friday and Saturday, rather, we'll be in Dothan, Alabama. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm excited. I I'm am. Excited. I'm excited about Amy I'm Alabama. Excited. I'm excited about, and I like Dothan. I like. You know, the last time I went to Dothan, we did the the radio broadcast. I mean, it was yes. a lot of fun. So we yes. got to cut this short, or I uh, got we got to cut it off rather because we're already yeah. but gone yeah. for so long. We've had so much fun, we all. And don't don't miss us at Fort Smith, Arkansas, and come see us in Wichita, Kansas, the first and second of April, and the eighth and ninth of April in Dothan, Alabama, one of our yes. favorite towns ever. All of our towns are yeah. favorite towns, but I really Pensacola, love it. Pensacola, May twenty first. Oh, yes, uh, Pensacola, May twenty first. Other shows, we have 18 shows booked for the year so far. We can't wait to see you. I'm Darren Knight, a.k.a. Southern Mama. I'm Reed Squirrel. And we'll see y'all next time. Cheers. Ooh, cheers. Cheers. Love y'all.